Hello and welcome back. So this is the second video on uh, on quadratic inequalities and we're actually now going to talk about quadratic inequalities. Um, you should have watched the video, the revision video on linear inequalities if you haven't done already or be absolutely certain that you understand um, the work that we covered here uh, a few moments ago. Quadratic inequalities um, are, are typified by a misconception. Um, and here's the misconception, which we'll call EG5. This is a misconception, and I will label it as such. So the misconception is that if we have uh, x squared is uh, greater than 4, that clearly uh, square rooting both sides we would come to the conclusion that x must be greater than 2. Now this certainly seems to be true. Uh, if, uh, if x was 3, 3 squared would be greater than 4, and this would be correct. Uh, if x was 4, 4 squared would be 16, which would be greater than 4, which would also be correct. However, um, there is a misconception here. Um, because what if x is equal to minus 3. Well, minus 3 squared is equal to 9, which is greater than 2. However, minus 3 is actually not, um, sorry, which is greater than 4, my apologies. Um, however, minus 3 is not greater than 2. Notice I've put a line through that to show it's been crossed out. Therefore, there's a misconception here because this is clearly the wrong answer. This is where quadratic inequalities come in. So let's take a, a second and better example, uh, but we will return to this later on. Uh, let's consider the situation where x squared plus 3x minus 10 is less than 0. Well, the first thing we need to do if we're going to solve this type of inequality is we need to forget about this inequality for a second and just treat it as an equation. x squared plus 3x minus 10 uh, we can solve this, and we can solve this relatively easily just by factorising. So let's factorise that. Um, what numbers multiply together to give us 10? Well, um, this has either got to be 1 times 10, or it's got to be 2 times 5 to get that 10. Um, we also know that this is negative and this is positive, therefore the signs have got to be different. So we've got to have x plus something, x minus something, and it would seem that 5 and 2 would fit the bill. We can then go on to solve this equation by saying, uh, therefore, uh, x plus 5 equals 0, or x minus 2 equals 0. Uh, in this case, um, I would be taking 5 off each side. And... Um, and saying that x was equal to minus 5. Um, in the other case, I would be adding 2 to each side, and I would be saying that x was equal to 2. Now, we call these two values the critical values. Funnily enough, because they are values, and they are critical. So now what we're going to do, using these two values, uh, these are obviously the, the, the um, points at which the, the, the curve, um, clearly it's a parabolic curve because it's an x squared, crosses, uh, crosses the axis, crosses the x-axis. Uh, we also know the y-intercept uh, at minus 10. We won't actually need that, but we do know it. So what we're going to do is just sketch a graph 
Sketched graphs are not accurately drawn. They're just a sketch. So let's assume for a second that this is uh, when x is 2 and that this is when x is uh, minus 5 over here. And whilst we're, um, we're not drawing this accurately, we do like to have things right. Things need to be nice. We need to have the x and y axis labelled. And we know that this, uh, this graph is a parabola. So it comes down something like this. It goes through the axis and it comes back up the other side. Well, here are our critical values. And we know that actually um, this is a less than symbol. So I could actually put some open circles around that. We also know we're looking for the values which are which are where, the, where this is less than zero. Well, this is the line at which x is zero. So anything below that line would be points at which x squared plus 3x minus 10 was less than zero. So what we can say is that this part of the curve represents all the points where this equation is less than zero. So I could now draw this in as if I'm drawing it on a number line. And we could then interpret this. So we could say, ah, so this must mean that minus 5 um, would be less than x, which would be less than 2. And this is our correct answer. We're always going to follow the same procedure for doing these. We're going to take the original equation. We're going to put it equal to 0. We're going to solve it, either by factorization or in theory, we, we, we could be asked to do this using the formula or by completing the square. We're going to get our solutions. These are going to give us our two critical values. We're going to sketch the graph. And from the graph, we're going to produce an answer. Every question will be done exactly the same way, including this one that we'll come back to. So what we're going to do is take a slightly, uh, slightly more difficult example, which we will call EG7. Okay. I'm just going to make sure the book is still actually in the camera frame. That marks. Uh, so we'll start with EG7. EG7 uh, is going to be uh, something slightly more difficult, I think we'll, we'll, we'll try at this point. So um, let's try... Um, 2x squared minus 7x minus 15 uh, is greater than or equal to 0. So, slightly more tricky example. Well, first thing we said before was that we would ignore the inequality and turn this into an equality. So, 2x squared minus 7x minus 15 equals 0. We then said we would go on to factorise this. So, factorising. We know we've got a 2x in one bracket, we have an x in the other. We can also determine that this must be 1 times 15, or uh, it must be 3 times 5. Um, just doing this by inspection, um, we must have a 3 there, I think, and a minus 5 in here. That would be a plus 3. Let's just check this. 2x times minus 5 gives me minus 10x. Plus 3x would give me my minus 7x. 3 times minus 5 gives me my minus 15. We're then going to go on to solve this. So we're going to say, therefore, 2x plus 3 equals 0, or x minus 5 equals 0. Solving both of these in the way that we've been taught to do them, we would take 3 off each side in this case, and we would end up with 2x equals minus 3. Dividing by 2, we would get x is equal to minus 3 divided by 2, minus 1.5.
We've then got the or example back up here. So adding five to both sides. we would end up with x is equal to 5. And here are our two critical values. Our critical values are x equals minus 1.5 and x equals 5. We would then always sketch a graph. Always, always, always. Sketched graphs do not need to be precise, they do not need to be accurate, they just need to be a representation of what the um, what the graph really looks like. So we'll pick 5 out as about there, and we'll pick minus 1.5 out just somewhere around here, it's uh, quite close to the excess. And we're going to sketch in our graph. Note, I still really like to be my X is labelled. Um, you might think I'm uh, a little bit, uh, I don't know, overzealous for wanting things right, but we're, we're mathematicians, so we should have things right. So now I can look at this and say, aha, right, what am I dealing with? I'm actually dealing with a greater than or equal to symbol. So now what I've got to start to think about is, so... Uh, what does what does this mean? Well, I've got to look at this is when 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 y is zero. I've got to look at things which are greater than zero. Greater than zero would be this part of the graph and this part of the graph. In other words, the part to the right of the five and to the left of the minus one point five. I also know that I've got an equals in here. So if I were drawing this on a number line, I would uh, have a coloured in circle on the five and I would have a coloured in circle on the minus 1.5. And I would be saying, well, I want the pieces to the right, the bits above the line, the pieces going to the right of the five. And I would have the pieces going to the left, the pieces above the line going left from the minus 1.5. And I would put the arrows on. And I then might interpret this as my answer. So I might look at this and say, therefore, x is less than minus 1.5. I look at my circle again and note that it's coloured in, less than or equal to, or x is greater than or equal to 5. And here is my second example of a quadratic inequality. So we've done one where we've looked at what's going on below the line and one that's going on above the line. So let's return uh, to that tricky example of x squared is greater than 4. So we'll return back to e.g. What was it? 5. And e.g. 5 was that x squared was greater than 4. Well, we notice with all the other examples we did, uh, we had a zero on this side. So what we're going to do to begin with is we're going to put this in the same form as all the other examples we had. So we'll take four off both sides. And we'll end up with x squared minus four is greater than zero. The next thing we did with all of these was we turned them into an equals. So Let's do that. X squared minus 4 equals 0. Fantastic. The next thing we did with all of these was we factorised. Well, X squared minus 4 is a beautiful example of the difference of two squares. So we should have X plus 2. X minus 2. You probably know that as a pretty standard result, so I won't go into factorising it. If you're not familiar with the difference of two squares as a standard result, you should uh, possibly go and practice that or, or, or go and find a video on that. I haven't done one yet, but I probably will end up doing so. So, uh, at this point, we can say, therefore, either x plus 2 equals 0 or x minus 2 equals 0. 
and going through our standard solving procedures, taking two off each side in this one, adding two to each side in this one, we end up with x equals minus two or x equals two. I would now have to sketch my graph. So, set of axes. So either x equals two or x equals minus two. Sketches, not accurate, but we're still gonna put our x on, we're still gonna put our y on, and make them look as nice as we can. We're going to draw in our parabola. There we are. And we can say, ah, so if I was drawing this on a number line right now, I would know that because this was a greater than symbol, not a greater than or equal to symbol, that these two circles are not coloured in. And I would look at this and say, well, I want the bits where we are greater than zero, above the line. And this is above the line only when we're going to the right. So at this point, I would be able to say, we're going that way. Similarly, this is above the line only going to the left. Hence, I would be able to say, we're going this way. And I would now be able to record my inequality. And I would be able to say, therefore, x is less than minus two, or x is greater than two. And this is my final answer in my final inequality. Now we can see, referring back to our previous example, where we had the misconception in here that x was just greater than two, that we'd only produced half the answer. We can also look at the fact that when we had x was minus 3, we knew it didn't satisfy this. However, if x is minus 3, it is true that minus 3 is less than minus 2. Therefore, we do satisfy this part of the answer. We're going to do one further example, which we're going to call eg8. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and I'm going to ask you to complete this example on your own. I will then go through the answer to this so that you can see this in detail. Could you please have a go at x squared minus 8x plus 7 is less than or equal to 0? Pause the video now. OK, you should have an attempt at this in front of you. So the first thing we would go and do is we would say, I am going to get rid of the inequality and I'm guessing I'm going to get an equality. I'm then going to factorise this and solve it. So in factorising this, I can see that uh, this must be... Um, can only be 1 and 7. Let's just make a note of that. This can only be 1 times 7. It's prime. Um, this is a plus. These are minuses. This is a minus. Therefore, both the symbols are the same and they are negative. And this can only be minus 1 and minus 7. We're just going to check that. x times minus 7 gives me minus 7x. Minus 1 times x gives me minus x. Minus 7x minus x is minus 8x. This all works very nicely. Um, I can say, therefore... Uh, x minus 1 equals 0 or x minus 7 equals 0. I can then solve these as we would using our normal rules. So x must be equal to 1 or x must be equal to 7. I can now... Uh, Obviously, these are my critical values. You might not have written that in, but these are my critical values. I can then sketch my graph. Now, interestingly, I, um, I want this to go off in that direction. Um, 
and I want perhaps uh, one down here and seven here. Look, I'll just extend that line a little bit. Um, it's uh, not actually going to be accurate, but and this is x and this is y, and we'll just draw in our parabola. So our parabola will come down here somewhere. It'll go through here. Go back up the other side. Not particularly well drawn, but it doesn't have to be. It's a sketch. Now I'm looking for a less than or equal to, so this will be a circle coloured in. So will this. And I'm looking for when this is less than or equal to zero, so below the line. So it's this section here that I'm interested in. Therefore, as it's between the two dots, I can join these together. I can then present my answer just by reading it off from the number line. So one is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to seven. And this is my final solution. Thank you for watching.